Hello guys, welcome to Flow Fighter, a channel which is here to help you to understand the basics of aviation. Today I will introduce you the concept of the aircraft power plant. Why aircraft power plant? What is it actually? Aircraft power plant is an aviation term which describes the means, a device or concept, which generates the aerodynamic force called thrust, here, which contracts the aerodynamic drag, which is a counter force. Aircraft power plant is normally in such a small aircraft divided in two parts. First part is called an engine and the second part is the propeller. Let's start with a basic explanation about what are those aerodynamic forces. Aerodynamic forces are physical forces generated during the flight as an interaction between the aircraft and the surrounding air. On the aircraft, which is in flight, are four basic aerodynamic forces present. The first is gravitational force generated by the weight of the aircraft. As an opposing force is a lift which is a force generated mostly by wings to counteract the weight of the aircraft. Because aircraft is a moving object which moves through the air, its body or shape generates a drag which results in a force opposing the direction of the flight. And the last important force is a thrust force generated by the aircraft power plant, which should be enough to overcome the drag generated by the aircraft itself. One of the most basic concepts of the aircraft power plant on a small aircraft like this one is a four-cylinder piston engine with a fixed-pitched propeller. Generally, engine assembly is divided into several sections where the major sections are engine itself and the supporting systems. In the supporting system section, Various systems are present, like electrical system, consisting of the battery and cables. There is also ignition system, consisting of magnetos, for example, oil system, including oil tank and filter, and so on. A basic engine type, used widely in small general aviation aircraft, is a four-cylinder piston engine of a boxer type which means that the cylinders are placed in opposing direction to each other, which provides better cooling and air distribution within the engine space. These engines are directly connected to the propeller, which means that the engine revolutions are directly related to the propeller RPMs. In this concept, the engine has also a carburetor with air intake, which provides a fuel mixture to the engine. However, also engines with direct injection systems are also installed in such aircraft as well. This kind of propeller is a fixed pitch propeller, which means that the blades cannot be rotated to increase or decrease the blade's angle. Generally. Such propellers are just a one solid piece, for example metal, like this one, which is on one side very easy to operate, however, such propeller may be ineffective in certain flight conditions. The small aircraft, with a little bit more performance, has also a bigger engine. This means, for example, that this aircraft has a six-cylinder piston engine with a propeller, which is variable pitch propeller, or a constant speed propeller. As you can see, the six-cylinder engine is a bit more complicated like its four-cylinder brother. It is true that this engine delivers more power to the propeller and thus a more performance. However, with bigger fuel consumption 
and a more engine weight should be also expected. These factors may in the end affect the overall operating characteristics of the aircraft, which should be also considered. Aircraft, which is equipped with the engine that have a higher performance, is also probably equipped with a variable beach propeller or with a constant speed propeller. Both type of such propellers share the same principle, which is the ability to rotate the blades to such a blade angle, which is most effective for a given situation. In other words, the more speed the aircraft has, the more the blades should be open to the incoming air. In general, such propeller consists of a hub and a propeller blade. So, now let's do some engine run-up to see how it works in a real life. Now, the engine is in the idle throttle position, which means that the engine power is set only to warm up the engine. From this point of view, for example, you may see how the engine is rotating the alternator behind the propeller. In order to determine the correct condition of the engine, the whole spectrum of RPMs have to be checked. So we will try to continuously increase the power. As you can see, the engine works nice and smooth up to the full throttle, where it starts to overcome the braking action from the wheels. And that's it, all fine. Another type of power plant, which may be installed on the aircraft, is a turboprop engine with a constant speed propeller. For example, this is a special modification of the 206 Cessna aircraft in which a turboprop engine is installed. The concept of the turboprop engine is that instead of pistons connected to the engine shaft, there is a turbine which drives the shaft and the propeller. The reason why this modification is so special is that the engine is mechanically connected to the airframe and is controlled by the original means like in the similar piston variants with the help of analog instruments. However, the main difference is the engine power which this engine delivers. For you to get the rough picture, this engine delivers approximately 120 more horsepowers like its Lycoming variant.
Ok, let's perform the engine run for this one too. Again, as you will see, the full throttle range must be checked to determine the proper functionality of this engine. Together with the engine check, other systems have to be checked as well in order to find potential defects. Nevertheless, the sound of the engine is really great. Ok, well done. Let's move to the last power plant type, which will be introduced in this video. For this aircraft, the aircraft power plant which generates the thrust force is a jet engine. Instead of using propeller to generate the thrust force, the jet engines used for example for this jet aircraft are of the turbofan concept which means that the generated thrust force consists of the bypassed airflow generated by the fan with combination of the hot output turbine airflow. The fan in the front generates the bypassed airflow and behind the compressors generate the compressed air for the combustion chamber. From the combustion chamber, the hot air flows through the high pressure and low pressure turbines, which drive the whole engine and flow out from the engine exhaust nozzle. Here we still need to install the chamber and the turbines. After successful installation of the combustion chamber, we may install the turbines. At first, we need to prepare all turbines together with their stator parts. Generally, Turbines are divided to low pressure and higher pressure turbines. As you can see, turbine is on its place now. By the way, you can also see on the sides of the engine the bypassed air coming from the fan placed in the front of the engine. Now we have also the outflow nozzle installed, so the only thing is to install the engine cowling to complete the engine. Generally, the jet engines are of the free turbine concept, which means that they can be rotated even when the engine is off. This is called, for example, windmill effect, because the wind is rotating the engine.
So, this was the basic description of the aircraft power plant, the engines and the propeller. Next time, we will talk more about the cockpit and the aircraft instruments. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you next time.